Hey, Alex here. Today we're going to be talking about a popular species of New World monkey, howler monkeys, specifically the black howler, Aluata caraya. I'm not sure if I'm saying that right. There are 15 recognized species of howler monkey, all in this genus. There does exist a transitional extinct form that resembles a giant spider monkey with some howler features, but that's not the focus of today. Howler monkeys are in the family of Teoidae, the only monkeys whose tails are strong enough to support their entire body weight and thus be considered prehensile. They do this by having a hairless pad along the bottom, which increases frictional force, and a powerful set of caudal flexor muscles. Other members include spider monkeys, woolly monkeys, and the muriki. Black howlers are found in the south of the bulk of the Amazon jungle, mainly in Argentina, Bolivia, and Paraguay, though also southern Brazil. Black howlers are rather large for New World monkeys, especially the males, which at 15 kilos are roughly twice the size of the females. Although black, this isn't the best way to identify them, since the females are blonde, the same pattern seen in some species of gibbon. This sexual dimorphism is probably not homologous. Some scientists refer to Alawatakaraya as the black and gold howler to distinguish it from the Mexican black howler. Howler monkeys are highly irregular in that they represent the return of the suspensory animal to a movement pattern composed mainly of arboreal quadrupedalism. Their hips and shoulders in particular have been compared to those of primitive apes, an old world group, and as used as a model for how early apes would have moved, mainly arboreal quadrupeds, they also make extensive use of vertical climbing and sub suspension. This lifestyle in the modern day is rare. Most primates are specialized for arboreal quadrupedalism or for suspension, but not both. Of all the Atelidae, howler monkeys have the shortest arms, which are basically the same length as their legs. This may account for their interesting style of movement. Howler monkeys have a distinctive call, which sounds like this. They're able to produce it because, uniquely among mammals, their hyoid bone is enlarged and partly hollow, allowing for the sound to reverberate. I looked in the usual textbook I used for muscle morphology to look for how their muscles adapted to this hyoid, but the text was curiously silent. There was a study that found a correlation between louder cries and smaller testicles. This may be an example of a morph, which is to say a group with distinctive features within a species that is not tied to location. The textbook example of a morph is in cuttlefish, where large individuals and small ones use drastically different mating and hunting strategies. But they have been described in everything from lizards, and there's a particularly interesting one there, to fossil dinosaurs. In howlers, because a loud call is attractive, louder males don't need large testicles to ensure their paternity, whereas quieter ones do. Howler monkeys have powerful tails. The flexors are called elongate muscles, which may have a different name depending on which text is examined, cross multiple vertebrae and are markedly thick, allowing the tail to support the weight of the whole body. Howler monkeys, despite their relatively high-looking foreheads, have the simplest brain among the Atelidae family, and probably the simplest, the simplest brain of all monkeys, excluding the marmosets. This may be due to their diet. Most howler monkeys eat mainly leaves for most of the year, and lack specialized adaptations such as a complex stomach. As a result, they probably can't sustain the high calorie demand of a brain, and are forced to develop large jaws and masticatory muscles that limit the size the cranium can grow to. Black howler monkeys live in quasi-harem groups, with a dominant male that monopolizes the females in his group. They defend a territory by roaring. This advertises where troops are, so that they can then decide whether to meet one another or avoid one another. Despite their smallish brains, they have a complex array of facial expressions, which are similar in arrangement to their cousins, the spider monkeys. Howl monkeys are a South American species. As a result, the biggest threat to their population comes from meat production. Forests are created to create soy farms. Most of the soy goes not to feed humans directly, but to feed cows, which are then killed to feed humans. Contrary to popular belief, cows do need to eat a lot of protein, necessitating soy and other high-protein crops to grow to feed them. And as a result of having to go through a middleman, more than 80% of that protein ultimately doesn't end up in human bellies. This wasteful process uses a far more land that is necessary to feed people, and the bulk of that extra land comes from burning back jungles, especially in Latin America. Well, you may be asking yourself now, what about responsible versions? Unfortunately, unlike products such as palm oil or, of course, the soybeans themselves, they are not innately unsustainable. There is little to no nuance here. 
so-called regenerative farming, while admittedly better from a raw carbon footprint standpoint, actually uses even more land than soy feed. If you want to save the forest of the new world, skip the beef burger and eat some chicken or tofu.